welcome back to another vlog by J Vlog. And today we're gonna hear my take on the Australian Open 2019 in tennis. First of all, I wanna give a big congratulation to the women champion, which was Naomi Osaka from Japan. Yeah. And the men champion, which was Novak Djokovic from Serbia. Congratulations to the both of you. First of all, a little talk about my interest in tennis. As you may know, I play tennis every now and then. And my interest in tennis is mainly focused on the four Grand Slams every year. So if you want to talk to me about Davis Cup, or Rogers Cup or Indian Wells or Stockholm Open it's interesting but uh, so I guess it is okay if you are not calling me a hardcore fan of tennis um, but when it comes to Grand Slams I'm not just a hardcore fan I am a nut that's right I'm watching it with very much interest and I have watched this year's Australian Open very very thorough for the last two weeks uh, actually it takes me a little longer than two weeks to watch it everything I want to see because it's so much alright so let's just get into it And we're going to start off with the women, because as you all know, it's ladies first. Well, first of all, a big congratulations once again to Naomi Osaka from Japan. She didn't only just win this year's Australian Open, she also in the same process became the number one ranked player in the world. A big congratulations. So. That means that now she has won two Grand Slams in a row because as you know she won the US Open last year in that controversial final against Serena Williams and she backed it up and a lot of people didn't expect her to back it up because that's something that has happened a lot of times in women's tennis in the last couple of years. Uh, we had a champion in Grand Slam, and we all thought very big things of her. But then she just often disappeared, and uh, maybe it was too much for that player. But Naomi Osaka impressed us all by winning back-to-back -back championship. When she won the US Open, of course, she became a star. But now, she has become a superstar and uh, she is the future of women's tennis. First of all, a little bit about her as a person. Hi, I'm Naomi Osaka and I play for Japan. Naomi Osaka was born in Japan, but she moved to the United States when she was only three years old. She speaks uh, fluently perfect English, because as I said, she grew up in the United States. So a lot of fans kind of look at her like an American even though she is from Japan, she represents Japan. Her mother is from Japan and her father is from Haiti. So she's kind of a very exotic mix of those two. She's awfully cute. She has a smile that just makes people melt. And the reason why I'm mentioning all of these things is that all of these things are just gonna expand her fan base around the world. She's very shy she's very soft-spoken and she's very innocent in her personality um, hello uh, um, no but like um, for real I was looking at her age and she's 18 and I was like oh my god I'm so old <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't want to sound rude to you guys right but like when I sit here, it's like you guys aren't real people. <laughs> to be honest, I was so scared serving second serves. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, please. Um, 
Yeah, and somehow I made it, so. Oh! Uh-oh. I'm not okay. No, I'd be so much better if I wasn't on the ground. Yeah, we, I'm a ghost. You don't see me. <laughs> um, actually, I live in Florida now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm really honored to be playing for Japan, and um, my dad's side is Haitian, so I represent. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot the rest of your question. Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, next time I, I walk into the press room, I'm gonna be like, what's up? Really? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Okay, I'm sorry. People tell me when, or, or like, people tell me when I talk, I don't move my mouth. Do I? Because I'm really conscious, so like now I'm trying to like exaggerate, but I'm. I don't know, because they're like, oh, you can be a ven ventriloquist or whatever, you know? It's not, it's not that extreme. Okay. But you can hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Uh, she's 21 years old, but lots of times it feels like she's much younger. Uh, almost like a child sometimes when she answers questions. Uh, People laugh sometimes uh, at her responses and, and answers, and she don't intend to be funny, but it comes out funny uh, sometimes, uh, especially on the on-court interviews, when she can say things like, oh, I'm sorry, it's so hot out here. I just want to go inside. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, and I know that it's going to be tough no matter who I play, and honestly, I'm just trying to go inside because it's a little bit hot right now. You want me to let you go, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And the thing that makes me a little sad is that uh, when she grows older, she's probably going to be better at interviews and be more slick with her answers. So uh, that innocence will probably disappear, which is a shame, because it's so fun that she's so, well, natural and innocent still. And then it's her playing style. She's very aggressive. She's a great ball striker uh, and she's very good at defending. And that's the thing. She's a little bit like Novak Djokovic sometimes. A very good defender and a very good mover. And very calm around the court. Uh, sometimes she can get angry with herself if she doesn't capitalize on a match point or something. Uh, but overall, she's very calm around the court. And she got a fire inside of her. Uh, she really, really wants to win. And she got a great hunger. And she's one of those players that she's not happy with just winning one Grand Slam. You notice that in this tournament. So it's the overall package. It's going to give her a lot of fans around the world. And the reason I mention all of this is that it's not only her playing style and her personality and her appearance and there's so, it's just so many things that makes the complete package when it comes to have lots of fans all over the world. Not just tennis lovers but sports lovers in general. And also, I want to take my hat off to the runner-up, Petra Kvitova from the Czech Republic, who, as you know, won, has won Wimbledon twice before. And she had a terrible thing happen to her three years ago when an, an attacker got into her home and stabbed her in her left hand. And she's a lefty. So it could have been that she was never going to be able to play ever again. But she came back and uh, she got to the final. Did you ever doubt, did you ever lose belief that you would be back in this moment? <laughs> and 
and she also has a very exciting uh, playing style and uh, she won a lot of hearts here at this tournament and she got a great story and it was just painful that she didn't win because she deserved to win also because she played so good in the final but of course in the end Osaka was the better one slightly better one so she deserved to win and just a few words about my idol Serena Williams I have to talk about her because this was her third Grand Slam since returning from having her daughter Olympia her first baby uh, she did went to the finals in the last two Grand Slam which was a great accomplishment but she didn't play well at all in those finals so there was a lot of uh, hopes that she will go far this one in this uh, Grand Slam uh, what happened was uh, she did play some good matches she did beat Simona Halep from Romania in the fourth round which was a great win because Halep was the number one ranked player in the world during the tournament but she did lose in the quarterfinals to former world number one Karolina Pliskova from the Czech Republic the same country where Kvitova come from that she lost against Pliskova was not a huge upset in itself but the way, she, the way that she lost she was up 5-1 in the third and final set and she had four match points but Klitschkova turned it around can you believe it and won the match if that would have happened to anyone it would have been a big thing but it happened to Serena Williams on hard court can you believe it what a shock so uh, the reason well there's a lot of speculations uh, Pliskova I think relaxed and played very well so we'll see what happens with Serena in the future of course as you know she has 23 Grand Slam victories and uh, which is a record in the open era but as you know Margaret Court from Australia has that annoying record of 24 Grand Slam victories uh, but a lot of those were in the pre-open era so uh, that doesn't really count I think shouldn't really Serena Williams is the greatest player of all time on the women's side there should be no question about that the big surprise on the women's side was Daniel Collins from the United States of America uh, she went to the semi-finals can you believe it uh, but she lost against Kvitova there but that was an, uh, that was an amazing feat uh, and also we gotta mention Ashley Barty from Australia, the home favorite. Uh, she went to the quarterfinals, she lost there. Uh, but uh, a great tournament from her. And it's, of course, it's more fun for the home crowd to have uh, Australian players to uh, root for in the later stage of the tournament. And one of Barty's victims were Russian legend Maria Sharapova. And she was a little bit salty at the press conference after the match. Just check out these two questions from reporters. Um, what, what did you make of the kind of crowd's reaction to you today? They uh, kind of booed you when you came back on court after that toilet break at the end of the second set and then cheered for that time violation. Uh, did you think they were a bit unfair to you? And did it affect you at all? What do you want me to say to that question? I don't know, just the truth, I guess. I think that's a silly question to ask. Did it affect you, though? Cool. Maria, you took Meldonium legally for 10 years to deal with your health problems. I wonder, just now that it's banned and you can no longer take it, is it a struggle physically to deal with the, the demands of a Grand Slam fortnight? Is there another question? Some other things that people talked about a little bit, some things were Victoria Azarenka from Belarus, former number one. Uh, she just she lost in the first round and she was just utterly soaping afterwards. She wasn't just crying, she was she felt almost destroyed from the lost. She was soaping. She was not only crying, 
because she was soaping at the press conference after the game. That was a little over the top, I guess. <laughs> and she also is a mother, just like Serena Williams. So I always thought that if you had a kid, uh, it didn't matter as much if you lose, because even if you lose and you go out of the tournament, you can always go back to your child. Uh, but no. These mothers, they want to win as much as all the other players. You can see that. Obviously, that's the case. Then we have Elina Svitolina from Ukraine, who lost in the quarterfinals. But the talk of the town was that in her box, she had Gael Monfils from France, the male player. So everyone was discussing, is this a new couple or what? It has to be. We did notice uh, a fairly familiar face in your player box. One Gail Monfils sitting up there today. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it at that. Well, everyone saw him, so yeah, I think he's, uh, yeah, he's supporting me. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see him more, uh, many more uh, in the future. Not only in my box, but on the court as well. Then we have big sister Venus Williams, who lost in the third round to Halep. Uh, the question is, how, for how long is she going to continue? She is uh, 38 years old, uh, Serena is 37, and uh, I would suspect that the, when the time comes, I, I have a gut feeling that they will both announce their retirement at the same time, perhaps on the court, who knows? So. Uh, Serena, as you know, are still ch chasing championships, so uh, the retirement, I think, will take a while, if that is the case. So, a great ladies' tournament. So, a great tournament for the women. Now, we will talk about the men. Like I said, a big congratulations once again to the unbelievable Novak Djokovic from Serbia. When he won this tournament, he broke the Australian Open record. He has now won seven Australian Open Championship. Which, which means that he is Mr. Australian Open. You can say similar to the way Rafael Nadal is Mr. Roland Garros, the French Open, and Roger Federer is Mr. Wimbledon. He now owns 15 Grand Slam titles while Rafael Nadal has 17 and of course Roger Federer has 20 and those three players are not just the big three in tennis but they are the three greatest tennis players of all time I mean there you have it as of right now Djokovic is number three Nadal number two and Federer is number one those three are the GOATs and Federer is the ultimate GOAT the most complete player of all time. Uh, no, uh, congratulations. Uh, okay, seven Australian Opens, 15 uh, slams. Not but too to bad. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> not too bad. You cannot complain. You cannot complain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you, you, you're always like, okay, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's fine. Niente particolare. <laughs> Novak Djokovic has finally gotten out of her big funk that he had like two years ago or something. It was a weird time because he had a difficulty winning tournaments, winning matches, period. But now he is so, 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 so back. He is his own self. Uh, he's back where he belongs. He has now won three Grand Slams in a row. Wimbledon US Open and now Australian Open. He's back. And he's still number one in the world. And he has no weaknesses. He's an unbelievable defender. The greatest of all time, perhaps. He has the greatest two-hand and backhand of all time. He moves around the court like it's no struggle at all. And he also has 
nowadays a great serve and and a great forehand and he beat in the final Rafael Nadal from Spain who surprised so many people during this tournament because he has not played a single game since the US Open he has been injured and he came out smoking from the opening round he had changed his style a little bit which a lot of people talked about he was much more aggressive in this tournament he, he changed his service motion which was now much harder and faster he moved closer to the baseline he took the ball early and of course his strength has always been his uh, forehand cross that has so much spin on it but now he also had a great backhand a very hard backhand now harder than ever and he, it's obvious that he wanted to finish the points faster than usual because as he said himself he doesn't know how many years left he has uh, to play so he has to make the points shorter so it, that he doesn't spend so much time on the court especially on hard court because he often gets injured on hard courts so when it was time for the final a lot, of, a lot of people thought that Nadal had a big chance to win. A lot of people thought that Nadal has a great chance to win because he had looked so good in the tournament. But Novak Djokovic just annihilated him in three sets. It was no contest, really. The final between Djokovic and Nadal was billed as head versus heart. And can you believe it? This was their 53rd match between them so that means that this was and is the biggest rivalry in tennis history and Djokovic lead their head-to-head -head 28 versus 25 now after he won the final now the question is will Djokovic and Nadal catch up to Federer's 20 Grand Slams we will see Nadal will probably protect Roland Garros in France. So he will win a couple more there, of course. It will be interesting to see how Federer will play in the future. Federer lost already in the fourth round to this tournament's big name, I have to say. There's always been this talk about the new generation of male players. When are they going to take over from the big three? and they are knocking on the door and this new generation is led by Alexander Sverev from Germany but the new face that got the most attention this tournament was without a doubt from Greece Stefanos Tsitsipas man he's only 20 years old he's good looking he looks a lot like Bjorn Bori actually from the 70s because he had long hair, a little beard, but his playing style reminds a lot about Roger Federer's actually. And he beat Federer in the fourth round, which was the upset of the whole tournament, I would have to say. Not just that he won against Federer, but the way he beat him. He beat him at his own game. Everything Federer did, he did better, except for the serve. He won 3-1 in sets amazing so he will get a lot of new fans from now on I think he's the one that we will remember the most from this tournament outside of Djokovic's brilliance we also gotta mention Francis Tiapo from the United States he's the 21 year old Afro-American who went all the way to the quarterfinals and he had a lot of great wins in this tournament and he had a special uh, winning routine where he took off his shirt and banged his arm and screamed out loud so look out for him in the future so we have several young uh, players knocking on the door in the male men 
draw. Uh, I mentioned Sverev earlier. He's, he continues to be a disappointment in the Grand Slams. Why? I don't know. He's ranked number three in the world and he, he do so great in other tournaments but not in the slams. He's like stuck there. We'll see what happens in the future but that, that's a strange thing. How would you say your body is right now as far as condition? Uh, my body is uh, close to perfection right now. That's bragging. That's bragging. We don't need that. Calm it down, young man. He lost against Milos Raonic from Canada. And he was so angry, he banged his tennis racket on the ground. Is there any getting out of this? Well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it properly. And Sverev wasn't helped by the fact that he was trained by this legend. To our champion, please welcome back on to Rod Laver Arena, Ivan Lendl. Another surprise was Lucas Pouillet from France, which went all, all the way to the semi-finals. Good for him. Pablo Carena Busta from Spain. I have to mention him because he got so angry in the fourth round when he lost against Ken Ishikori from Japan. Pai plays the ball down the line. Today I'm by a safe ball! He plays the ball down the line. What a shame. What a shame. That's not his true character. He, he can hold his head high. He just lost it a little bit. And as you can see, Busta is storming out of the court. He blames the Empire for losing the whole match. And he refused to shake his hand after the match. It's safe to say he was really pissed off. Speaking of uh, Australian players, I gotta mention my favorite player that I like to watch. Not proud of it, but Nick Curios. He lost in the opening round, which I think is a shame because I always hoped that he would do well, especially in the Australian Open, for the fans' sake. The issue with him is always his mental side. He gets angry when he plays matches, when it doesn't go his way. Now that ball was. I did stick my hand out the window, Nick, and I, yeah. I almost got that. <laughs> well, about three o'clock, you'd have been okay because the window was open at three o'clock, so he might have caught it. <laughs> Inside and throws his body over it, and here's the, the ball that came back to Nick, and I'll just see how far I can hit this out of the stadium. Okay. He loses his concentration, and he looks not interested in playing sometimes. But it turned out that uh, Raonic went far in this tournament, so it, I guess it wasn't such a bad thing to uh, lose in the first round. I just want to say a few things about Roger Federer. He's 37 years old now, and he wants to play for a couple of more years, no doubt. But he doesn't want to lose this early. If this becomes a habit, which seems to be the case, that I don't know if he wants to continue doing this all the time. I don't know if he wants to continue that much longer. You see, he wants to play, but he wants to either win or be in the finals. Perhaps the semi-finals he can manage. But losing in the fourth round? He doesn't like that. And he was very sad at the press conference. You can see it afterwards. No, I have massive regrets, you know, tonight. I might not look the part, but I am. Uh, this hurt. And he lost pretty early, both in the US Open and the Wimbledon. So three tournaments in a row now, 
he has lost for his standards pretty early in like the quarterfinals or fourth round uh, he's still the, clearly the most loved player in the world but we'll see what happens and uh, I think he's a little provoked when he gets questions about the new generation knocking on the door uh, he was asked by Jim Courier on the court after one of his victories in this tournament and he was asked what do you think about the new generation and he replies like what do you want me to say so he doesn't like too many questions about the new generation he knows that they are knocking on the door so we'll see what happens there I also gotta mention of course Andy Murray which is the number four player in the big four that has dominated male tennis for a very long time now a whole era he lost in the first, very first round and as we all know it was due to his uh, problem in his right hip and uh, it just doesn't get any better and he told everyone before the match that this will probably be his last tournament uh, so he will perhaps do a, a major surgery we will see the thing was in on the on-court interview uh, he was presented with this video they played up in the stadium with all these players giving their tribute to Andy Murray because they thought that perhaps this was his last game but uh, it was <laughs> it was a little cheesy because and it was a little I don't know what to say but uh, the thing was that he has he hadn't promised that he was gonna retire he said he maybe was gonna retire he might have a hip operation like I said so uh, but they were treating it like this was his last game uh, so that was kind of awkward I felt actually I had difficulty watching I, I had to switch the chance man it was too much for me now he felt like he almost felt like now I have to retire because all these wonderful peers of mine they were saying goodbye in such a nice way so we'll see what happens I guess they will be happy that he will come back if he comes back overall it was a great tournament I enjoyed it very much I'm looking forward to the next one and I want to thank you for watching this vlog and for me, I give you 15 love. Uh, it was a weird time because she, she, he, motherfucker. Follow me on social media because I'm awesome and unique. Oh my god. <laughs>